The Tuntungan Campus, 4th Campus, of UIN North Sumatra is benefited of supporting project for Islamic Higher Education Development funded by Islamic Development Bank, ISDB, for the construction of seven new buildings and supporting infrastructures. This campus was built in 2019 with total area 90.000 square meters. This campus consists of seven main buildings and a powerhouse with total area 26.000 square meters allocating 40.500 square meters for pavements and pedestrian areas and 23.50 square meters for green space. Rectorate building. A three-story building centers for administration of the Tuntungan campus with total area 3,000 square meters of 86 office rooms. Two accesses main lobby in the first floor with total area 143 square meters provide access and information for visitors and guests by receptionists. Rector room at second floor with total area 100 square meters includes rest area, hall and multi-purpose space, toilet and pantry. At the third floor, we have a multi-purpose hall or auditorium with total capacity for 184 people, mainly purposed for events and activities equipped by professional audio and video system. Faculty of Social Sciences and Faculty of Economic and Islamic Business. A three-story building with a connecting bridge to make the building's unity, built of 7.296 square meters and occupies for 28 classrooms, seven lecturer and dean rooms, and a service room, consisting of 163 total rooms with 100 people lecture hall with sophisticated audio-video support. Faculty of Public Health and Faculty of Science and Technology. As to the previous ones with the connecting bridge, with total area 7,083 square meters, this building opens for two seminar halls for 100 participants an engineered professional audio-video system, a dean room, and three vice-dean rooms of faculty, 25 classrooms, eight lecturer rooms, a meeting room, and a room for service and administration made this 160 rooms in total. Library and Integrated Labs These four-story building is connected by a lobby in the first floor with total area 7,867 square meters. The library has a common room for relevant purposes with 100 people and professional audio-video system. Collection room in every floor provide information for the visitor to locate books and relevant literatures with technology-aided system, consists of 46 rooms and a service room. The labs have 38 rooms with quality apparatuses. The chem labs is supported by safety shower for emergency purpose. Powerhouse. With total area 833 square meters, this is centered for powerhouse of the campus. Hereby, main power panel, generators, and pumps are stationed under scrutiny and protection. The walls are layered to avoid noisy of machine and generators. The completion of building infrastructures by supporting project for the development of Islamic higher education is relevant to the vision of Islamic Learning Society by UINSU. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Selamat sejahtera bagi kita semua Selamat pagi kepada tamu kami yang terhormat 
Terima kasih telah memilih Karibia Butik Hotel Medan sebagai tempat untuk mengadakan acara pada hari ini. Saya Aryadi, Sekuriti Karibia Butik Hotel Medan yang akan menyampaikan perihal protokol kesehatan di ruangan ini. Pengukuran suhu badan pada pintu masuk lobi hotel dan pintu masuk ruangan ini. Jika pada saat cek suhu tubuh dengan termogan, temperatur tubuh di atas 37,3 derajat Celcius, kami anjurkan untuk istirahat sejenak sebelum melakukan pengecekan yang kedua. Wajib menggunakan masker atau pesil, jaga kebersihan tangan dengan hand sanitizer gel atau menggunakan air mengalir pada toilet di sebelah kiri ruangan ini. Physical distancing atau jaga jarak satu dengan yang lain minimal satu meter. Ruangan ini telah disemprot disinfektan secara berkala, baik sebelum dan sesudah acara. Ruangan ini telah ditata dengan mengikuti ketentuan social distancing. Kami menghimbau kembali agar menggunakan masker dengan benar, jangan menggantungkan masker di bawah dagu. Kami berharap para tamu kami yang terhormat agar dapat mengikuti ketentuan yang sudah berlaku di ruangan ini. Kami ucapkan terima kasih atas perhatian dan kerjasama. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih kepada Bapak atas instruksi tentang protokol kesehatan. Baik. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, let's say thanks to Allah who has given us the health, the time together here happily in this place. And salawat and salam may always be given to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who has guided us from the darkness to the lightness. Respectable Director of State Islamic University of North Sumatra, Professor Dr. Shahrin Harhab, MA, the Honorable, the Head of the Center for Language Development, Dr. Muhammad Dalimunte, SAG, SSM, HUM, the Honorable, our special guest, Dr. Rahmat Hussein, MED, the Head of English Applied Linguistic Program of Medan State University, the Honorable, our special guest, Professor Salahuddin Muhyiddin, PhD, Lecturer of Macquarie University, the Honorable, all of the committee, and finally, of course, the audience, welcome to international seminar entitled Virtual English Language Instruction During COVID-19 Pandemic. Before I read our agendas today, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Khairul Azmi Shagian, acting as your Master of Ceremony today. Well, to start our agendas today, I'd like to invite you to recite Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, the first agenda, I'd like to invite you to sing our national anthem, Indonesia Raya. All audiences are requested to stand.
the next agenda, I'd like to invite the head of committee and also as the head of Center for Language Development, Dr. Muhammad Dalimunte SAG SSM Home, to open this seminar and also to give welcoming speech. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah wa syukrillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba First of all, I would like to say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For giving us mercy, guidance and also the opportunity to join this big event Salawat dan salam Uh, forward it to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim alaih. The Honorable Director of UIN Sumatera Utara, Professor Dr. Sarin Arab MA. The Honorable, the distinguished guests, speakers, Professor Salahuddin Muhyiddin PhD, the lecturers of Macquarie University, Australia. He is online. Dr. Ahmad Hussein, MED, the head of master programs, English Applied Linguistics of Universitas Negeri Medan. The members of organizing committee of this, inter this international seminars the Center for Language Development in Sumatra Utara, and the Honorable all the participants of this seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to report that this seminar is conducted with hybrid system. 70 participants are following this seminar through offline meetings, and others or via Zoom meeting. They are coming from different institutions. Some are the English teachers of junior high school, and some are senior high school even. Some are coming from university. The Honorable Director of Win Sumatra Utara Medan, and ladies and gentlemen, the seminars will be conducted in two days Two days, October 12, 21, 20 and 21, and Wednesday, October 13, 2021, in Karibi Hotel. And I would like to say that it is funded by the budget in 2021 year of the Center for Language Development in Sumatra Utara Medan. Ladies and gentlemen, This international seminar will discuss about the virtual English language instruction during COVID-19 pandemic. To make this meeting very fruitful, we have invited the excellent speakers, Professor Salahuddin Muhyiddin PhD, the lecturers of Macquarie University of Australia, and Dr. Rahmat Hussein, MED, the head of master programs English Applied Linguistic Universitas Negri Medan. Simply reason why we defined these topics of the seminar. The English instructions in this COVID-19 need to innovate to respond to the struggles of education world at the present time. We have to find out the alternative solution to be able to keep the quality in English instructions at schools and also at university. Through this seminar, we will gain new ideas regarding the issues of language instructions in COVID-19 era. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say that 
because of the rector of Uin Sumatra Utara cannot join us today because of he has activity at the same time. So he asked me to open this seminar officially. By citing Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I opened this seminar officially. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I would like to say please enjoy the seminars and thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to the head of committee, Bapak Dr. Muhammad Dalimunte, for giving the report and open this seminar. Well, as we have finished our opening today, we will continue to our main and awaited session. I'm glad to introduce my brother Idris Sadri M.A.D., who will be acting as the moderator in this seminar. I'm Haru Azmi Shagian. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I hope you will enjoy the materials given. Finally, I say wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baik, Bapak-Bapak, Ibu-Ibu, uh, kita ada 15 menit waktu untuk cafe break uh, kepada Bapak dan Ibu, dipersilahkan.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning everyone, ladies and gentlemen um, It's a great honor to have you here I'm Idris Sadri, I will moderate this seminar session today Today we're going to listen to the presentation on a virtual language instructions during COVID-19 pandemic Alright, before we begin the panels I would like to address some issues regarding to the regarding to language instructions during COVID-19 pandemic. Global pandemic caused by the outbreak of a coronavirus diseases or COVID-19 around the world in 2020 has changed how human behaves in daily life. Most of the countries that are affected by these contagious diseases have their society perform social distancing and control actions to avoid infectious diseases transmissions by minimizing contacts between susceptible persons and infected persons that may pass on the disease. As a result, people are encouraged to do their activities from their own business or their own house, like working or studying, by using the advance of technology. In Indonesian context, the global pandemic significantly affects education system, in which the government is establishing public policy to see face-to-face -face learning in a formal classroom into online learning beyond a classroom, including English as a foreign language or EFL teaching. The change of face-to-face -face learning inside classroom into online learning outside the classroom has resulted in several consequences. Firstly, the sudden alterations of face-to-face -to, -face to online learning has shocked both teachers and students since it has not been predicted previously. Secondly, teachers and students have to adapt to some changes in their teaching and learning activities such as the use of technology, designing online materials, and assessing students' works online. Thirdly, shifting from inside to outside language classroom provides a number of challenges and difficulties, particularly for the teachers. Therefore, examining EFL teachers' challenges as well as their suggestions toward online teaching during, global, during the global pandemic is extremely crucial. So, Therefore, let us listen to Dr. Muhyiddin, who will give us a plenty of insights regarding to contribute to providing fruitful advices for language teachers, students, and school authorities to enhance the efficacy of online and learning activities, particularly during the global pandemic. On a Zoom meeting, right? Dr. Muhyiddin is currently based in a Macquarie University, Northern Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. He excels in applied demographic and spatial sciences, and he has a lot of experience in a range of global projects to develop urban area in a number of countries, such as Ghana, hosted by Brown University, the United States of America, and the Université de Montréal, Canada, project of urban development in Burkina Faso, Africa. So, please welcome Dr. Mohidin for uh, presenting um, his presentations on the subject matter. To the, prof um, to the Dr. Mahidin, this stage is yours. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you uh, to the committee, in particular the rector of uh, UIN Sumatra Utara, and also the most special person as well, the chairman. Uh, uh, Pak Delimonti uh, as the head of the uh, Pusat Bahasa as well, and the moderator uh, Pak Idris Adri. Uh, it is my honor to be able to give some uh, remark about uh, what happened about the virtual learning. Uh, 
in this case, I'm not the linguistic teacher, but what I can share is my experience and also my observation based on my universities, uh, what they're doing, as well as some experience based in Australia. So I hope it may uh, give you some ideas uh, what kind of like the strategies, what kind of the methods that can be applied as well in uh, UIN Sumatra Utara. So please uh, allow me to share my screen if it is possible. Okay. So the presentation I'm going to have now, uh, moderator, do I have like half an hour? How many minutes I have? So I assume it's half an hour, yeah? All right, a half an hour, please, Dr. Mohini. Yeah, okay. So I'm taking the title here is uh, Virtual Teaching and Learning in a Pandemic, uh, the case of Australian University. So when we talk about virtual learning or online learning or anything, so actually we are not only talking about that things. We may also want to talk about uh, what about the technology like Zoom or Google Meeting or about the impact from the pandemic like COVID-19. What about the, uh, the distant learning? what about the how to accommodate for the student but also the teachers so we are talking a lot of things so in order to do that one i just want to highlight uh, in this half an hour for my first presentation and later on we can have some discussion so i'm going to highlight about whether this pandemic and online learning is something new or is it something kind of like already been a while the second one is how do we mitigate ourselves or how do you, what is our strategy when we try to kind of like shifting from uh, online delivery. So uh, teaching methods as well as learning strategy that we are doing it and then later on we are going to uh, conclude and also some uh, giving some recommendation. So that's my point uh, for this uh, presentation today. So for the, as a background, uh, I'm telling about, yes, the global pandemic is basically uh, impact to a lot of things. So not only about education, but a lot of uh, including economics, social, and so on. But specifically for education, it is true is really kind of like having major impact. Just like uh, according to UNESCO report, uh, already in the mid of uh, 2020 last year about uh, the impact kind of like very huge to the student in particular because of as uh, the moderator uh, Idris mentioned that uh, a lot of school closed because of we need to keep our distance so around about like uh, a billion or about like 55 percent uh, enrolled student been affected and the question is that uh, because of this is so sudden, a lot of people thinking this is kind of like emergency education. Yeah, uh, we know that uh, our student and our uh, family who's kind of like doing school is almost like more than six months or eight months. In some places, maybe it's only more than a year or even you know, toward go to two years. So the consequences is basically all the school and all, all the education, including Pesantren, uh, SD, SMP, even university, they have to do adaptation and then transformative challenge, which is in a short time and then in terms of short preparation. So the question is that, is it going to be continue all the time until whatever it is? Because we have still a lot of uh, question or not knowing completely about what's the pandemic today. And then is there anything that we have to do in terms of we call it as new normal in education? Okay, so that's the two questions that we want to ask whether it's going to be continue or that we be need to do some new normal in education. 
Okay, let's uh, we look at the first part of the coin, which is pandemic, and then later on about the learning. Well, actually, pandemic uh, is not something new. Everybody uh, knew from the history that in the past, like in the 18th centuries or in the beginning of 19th centuries, we also have the same, we call it as Spanish influenza. If you can see that the, uh, us, the kind of like the, what do you call it, the wearing a mask like we have today, it's also was kind of like the uh, prescription for everyone during that one. So basically the same thing, we don't want to spread out and then the same thing today, uh, everyone can like be advised to wear masks. What the difference between in the past and the present is because of at the same time, uh, this COVID-19 is kind of like almost everyone been infected. Whether you're male, female, whether you are old or uh, young one, or whether you are in the poor economic point of view, or whether you are in the uh, rich economic point of view. And it's kind of like to everywhere. So as long as we've been kind of like in very crowded area, and then there is just even someone who got that one uh, been infected, so it's kind of like being spread very fast. Whether in urban area, in rural area, whether in developed or developing countries. So not necessarily uh, everywhere is basically we got that one. So as a result, uh, Today, pandemic is kind of like very massive because of just uh, by yesterday, it's already uh, affected about 237 million cases, if we want to say. Uh, and lucky enough that uh, a lot of countries doing very well in terms of how to mitigate by having a vaccination. Just by 9 October uh, last week, uh, according to WHO, about 6 billion of population has been vaccinated. It's about 70, 60 to 70 percent of the global population, the first dose. Yeah? So it means we rely on whether this vaccination can have one. one. But we also see that in the reality, somehow, even you've been in, uh, vaccinated, it is also still possible you got that, that kind of like a uh, been affected by coronavirus one. So that's kind of like the pandemic one. So uh, now it's about the uh, distant learning, whether this is something new or already kind of like uh, been a while. If we remember as an academic uh, talking about the Dan Coldaway quadrant, he basically in the beginning of uh, almost late or one, uh, the beginning of 2000 or uh, early 2000, he specifically mentioned about there are uh, four framework that you can use for the uh, teaching and learning one. Uh, one was basically about traditional classroom where student and also the uh, teacher at the same time and the same place one. Other, uh, which is kind of like involving technology as well as in terms of the distance, we can call it as the distance or even it is kind of like uh, using technology than online learning. So the point here that I want to make is basically the uh, distance learning has been a while. In particular, if you remember about open university, Universitas Terbuka, we have that one. So. The difference is basically in the past, before there was kind of like an uh, online one, the, the delay is basically we just watching the TV, we kind of like listening to the radio or we listening to the uh, recording one. So it's kind of like that distant one. And more and more coming here, we are using kind of like online directly. So of course, there are some challenges in terms of distance and online learning, in particular about uh, communication, uh, complication uh, from the traditional one, but also uh, the positive one is there are kind of like uh, studies says that excellent result having uh, learning online or distant one because this is more motivated student doing it, okay? So that's kind of like uh, plus minus doing distant learning one. Okay, when we combine together between pandemic and uh, this is kind of like the online or digital adoption. Yes, we see that a lot of the impact 
as uh, we mentioned before, education, school closer, in terms of economics, business closer. So it's also kind of like shifting from what the traditional one to go more to digital adoption. Why it's happening like that one? This is not far away from what we call it as revolusi industry. So everyone knows about the revolusi industry number four. What does it mean is in the past, when I said about the flu pandemic, that's what the situation when we just started with industrial, industrial revolution, where the invention is only about the car, a bicycle, the machine. It's not about the communication one. But then more and more coming here, the second uh, revolution when the telegraph and the telephone was invented. And then the third one, when the internet was invented in the three one, and then interconnectivity in industrial revolution number four, that's when the artificial intelligence, like you have chips connection, you have re, uh, Wi-Fi and so on. That's kind of like, uh, pushing uh, everything into digitalization. So in a way, uh, the using of digitalization was already there, but then when the COVID-19 struck to our society, yes, it reduced a little bit one, but the pushing now is become very much stronger than before. So in a way that's the shifting from whatever already in the traditional way, we can like, like what I said, it's like emergency education, whether you like it or not, you have to apply this one because this is kind of like the only one at available during that pandemic situation. Okay, so that's kind of like one. Uh, you can find out in every studies that the remote working and also digital activities increasing quite a lot in particular uh, in terms of information uh, workers, in terms of professional business, uh, financial activities. Not many people go to the bank, they just use uh, e-banking. And also for the uh, shopping, uh, they just use kind of like e-shopping as well, right? So th the same thing with education. Uh, education in the past, a lot of people want to go to campus, want to go to school. Now, because of this kind of limitation of movement, then yeah, you have to stay and then you have to do it that one. Okay. So that's basically the introduction uh, for our discussion next one. So what happened in, uh, in terms of uh, online learning? Okay. So once the pandemic has occurred in uh, anywhere, including in Australia, in Indonesia, uh in the context of the higher education in the context of primary school like sd smp or sma all teaching and learning activities have been shifted right away into online models with a short time so the problem is not all the teachers not all students are ready to have that one but they have to accept it because otherwise they cannot continue including with the government they want to make sure that uh, if anyone remember one of the sustainable development goal is education for all so it's kind of like obligation as a morality for every country or all the global society to make sure that education for all is continued so that's why at no cost at with with any cost at all even kind of like you have to apply that one you have to do it yeah? So learning no longer takes place exclusively between the four walls, like in the classroom, but uh, more kind of like using advanced uh, in technology. So learning program have been uh, to be offered outside the traditional face-to-face -face model. So the main challenge are uh, even for very, very experienced uh, teachers or educators, still finding it is uh, challenging, yeah? So imagine that if even for the experienced teachers, they've said it is very challenging. And we do have like very extreme left, those who have very uh, not experienced at all. And then in the extreme right, those who have kind of like very high experience, full of experience doing teaching, including online teaching, and now suddenly fully online learning environment. So the, some of the challenge is basically say like, find out about digital pedagogies, uh, what is different with uh, without uh, not digital 
uh, what is the best learning technology support for the learning and how to sustain student engagement and participation because just like uh if we have this kind of like online and then i couldn't see uh, everyone uh, or if we want to see everyone we have to have very big screen and then we, we can see them but if we have only small screen we can only see one or two or five or six but not everyone okay so far what have been done in the context of uh like in Macquarie University, one of the uh, university in uh, New South Wales or in Sydney, we kind of like trying to optimize and apply more so-called active learning. And at the same time, also to consider the health of educators, uh, the teachers and the student. So yes, we can like prioritize about to have active learning, but also at the same time, we have to see what about uh, the human being? So it's not only about the teaching only, but also about the human aspect, the teachers and also the student. Uh, even kind of like we have very good, the standard or program uh, uh, instruction, if kind of like the teacher not knowing or the student not uh, ready yet, it's not going to work at all. So active learning is one way, but at the same time, we also have to prepare the teachers and the student at the same time. So what does it mean active learning that we have conducted? This is a Macquarie strategy. So we are doing more kind of like uh, real-time lectures. We also doing real-time tutorial or practice. We have kind of like trying to apply flip classroom. It's combination between doing individually and then doing uh, together, but uh, students can like prepare before coming in and then teacher can like as a facilitator. Or uh, we also have the asynchronous learning. So that's kind of like combination what we have. Asynchronous learning is including like recording and then student listening everywhere and anytime they want. Uh, but at the same time, it need to kind of like combine with the uh, different aspect one. Okay, so that's kind of like uh, the four active learning that has been uh, applied in the context of Macquarie University and mostly in a lot of places in Australian context as well. So how do we uh, compare between the traditional and active learning? So in the traditional way, teachers are kind of like the center of information, like one way, one direction. So they explain and the student just to learn. But in terms of active learning, teachers are become a facilitators, uh, coaching and motivators. So not everything from one direction is more kind of like two ways, okay? So there is kind of like, question and answer, there is kind of like also uh, co-creation. So the teaching environment uh, create together, not only the teacher who did it, but also together with the learner. Teachers talk, student listen, and students are in the active learning, uh, student in kind of like active presenting. Uh, the content uh, in terms of traditional, the content is the king. So the units or the subject are structured around the contents, okay? So for example, uh, today, uh, this week, we talk about subject A, next week, we talk about subject B, and so on and so on. So that's kind of like become uh, very uh, already planned ahead, and then you have already kind of like uh, the contribution, uh, the content there. Nevertheless, in terms of the active learning, uh, yes, we plan something already, but also uh, if there is something new come up that one, uh, which is kind of like related with that one, you can still involve that one. Say for example, we talk about the grammar, about the uh, punctuation and so on, and suddenly in the news or in the something happening, it's kind of like related to that one. You can say that, why don't we use that one as a case study and then see what's going to have to happen. So you can like very improvise uh, using the active learning as well. So what strategy that we have now is kind of like, uh, at least we do have 16. The attention of on learning, okay? So we focus on the student minds uh, because 
whenever only one direction, we tend to just focus in the teacher. Okay, we usually forgot about the student one. I mean, yes, we can still see that one, but still our uh, focus mostly on what we want to say and so on. Uh, the second one is uh, by having active learning, we will know about the what the students still not understanding. So we can identify what the confusion, but also we try to solve together. Say for example, we expect by next week or week after, they should already understand module number two. But module number two may be can only be moving forward if they already know about uh, module number one. So having a uh, student also kind of like giving their voice and their uh, opinion, we knew exactly, oh, there is something kind of like missing in module number one, for example, then we try to kind of like solve that together. Number three, because of there are kind of like uh, two direction, it's kind of like it is expected the uh, learning more going deeper and also more increasing relevance because we mostly using the case study or kind of like debate uh, the new one and then the transferable skill much faster. Okay, so those who are kind of like maybe inexperienced before because of working together, it's become like the transferable skill become much faster as well. And then the assessment booster could not only from the teacher point of view, but also from the student. Say for example, in terms of active learning, we can ask what do you uh, think about this model question can be. So we can ask student and then exchange the question, not say, for example, uh, Pak Idris make uh, some question. So question that Pak Idris asks, we can ask to someone else. So someone else question can be asked to Pak Idris, but we can like, uh, we create that together and then we can like learn together as well. So that's kind of like learning. So uh, what is the uh, instruction that we can do or kind of like the strategy? one of the consideration that we try to have team-based learning or tbl okay what does it mean is according to a lot of studies yes if we do have resources we do have a lot of activities but if we do it together that's more kind of like giving more in, in terms of their involvement their understanding but also uh, some other engagement so that's kind of like very much what the uh, lot of study found out. So how do you do it in terms of team-based learning? So the first one is before going to the class it, uh, using Zoom or Google Meeting. So every individual have kind of like a pre-assessment. Okay, they have to maybe finding the article, finding some uh, stories, and then they in the class uh, they do it. Uh, answer the question uh, uh, individually and then they put together as a team so we want to check whether they understand the subject one as a team say for example we do have five students five students doing uh, answering question a b c d and e and then when they're as a team they can like checking each other what the answer of for a what the answer for b and then you can kind of like no, I don't think that the answer. So you are kind of like working as a team. And then you can argue, uh, say like why you declare the answer to that one. And then when the teaching started, so it's kind of like clarification session. Okay, yes, it could be uh, sometimes the, it's not always white and black and white, yeah? Uh, only one answer. For mathematics, uh, it's easy for say like two times two is four. We can say that one, but the way how do we get four is completely a lot of variation. The same thing, I think, for language, right? So how do we use uh, present tense? How do we use kind of like uh, future tense? And how do we use other tenses? A lot of things uh, according to the context. So there are kind of like classification and then the student and the teacher can debate each other. Okay, but there has to be some guidance to say this is the one. So that's kind of like more team based learning one. Another one is problem-based learning. I think this is very common with uh, everyone else already here. So what problem-based learning is basically, uh, 
there is kind of like a project base. Usually what we have is mostly related to what everyday life. Uh, I'm teaching in a business school. So what usually I'm using it is the case that, for example, what happening uh, trending in the market today. For example, during the uh, pandemic, a lot of the people buying, uh, maybe you heard in the newsletter, uh, Australian people, they just kind of like going to the market to buy a uh, toilet tissue. So the question is that why they kind of like buying of the toilet tissue? Because that's for the help uh, for the sanitation for everything here is based on that one. Okay. In the context in Indonesia, maybe like uh, you want to buy stock, uh, canned food or something that can like you can stop for a lot longer one. So that's kind of like as the problem uh, that you want to answer. In terms of economic, the question will be why people do that and then what uh, the estimation and so on. In terms of lang language or linguistic, you can also a lot of things. Why Canadian English different with uh, uh, United Kingdom English? Why Australian English is different with other English as well? So that's you can see about what is different and so on. So a uh, problem-based learning is basically tend to uh, request students to examine a problem and suggest explanation or solution. So then the output from that one is kind of like more in to improve understanding, okay? So that's kind of like what the recommendation. Uh, the only thing is project uh, problem-based learning online, the, uh, we know that in the class when we face to face it's easy to see their expression right but during the online what we found is kind of like completely somehow different uh, we sometimes people uh, like student is not uh, putting their face of course we want to have their face to see right but sometimes uh, some student couldn't uh, put their face because of the connection may be very poor because of the kind of saying that we are outside because it is not uh, compulsory to open. It's kind of like human right issues, kind of like you can't uh, uh, force students to open their face as well. So uh, the suggestion is basically lead with compassion and care. We have to understand from their side, but also from the teacher point of view. Connection matters, uh, maybe they want to see their friend, uh, they want to see you as well, and then be mindful of family situation and stress. Uh, imagine in the beginning of that one, maybe okay, but after two months, after three months, everyone was like, oh, it's so stressed. It's kind of like boring at home in the sun. So it's, you need to be mindful of situation and also the stress they have. Provide as much voice and choice as possible for, for students, especially in terms of how they want to share their learning and also kind of like a lot of uh, consider about maybe uh, technology that we are using. Uh, if you couldn't use this Zoom, maybe you can use like, recording and so on, but still you put reflection on this one. Uh, the other uh, one point that we talked about before is about flip class. So the flip class is basically combination uh, about the preparation from student point of view before, and then uh, they're doing it first, kind of like flip and flop. Basically it's kind of like from student to the teacher, from teacher to student, kind of like go back and forward together, okay? So the biggest concern about this flip uh, classroom is basically uh, to make sure that student come to the session be prepared. Can we assure that if we uh, know that the student is going to do preparation in the first place, then yes, the flip class is will be the best answer. But if we are not so sure whether the student already doing uh, preparation beforehand, then I'm not so sure whether flip class is kind of like highly recommendation. So in summary, uh, I think I have just a few more slides to conclude that one. So benefit of active learning is basically uh, it's keeping attention on learning, yeah, because we focus on that one. Again, so we are identifying and resolving uh, confusion that as uh, the strategy that we shared before. And we also kind of like uh, going deeper, uh, more increasing relevance, fostering student ability to work with others as a teamwork, and then fostering student reflection and self-assessment by kind of like 
asking them to do self-assessment and making some reflection. Okay, so that's kind of like uh, uh, the benefit of learning. Okay, this is just kind of like uh, having a little bit some evaluation about online learning design. So what the student want is basically uh, we create opportunities for learner to collaborate because being uh, isolated because of pandemic was already very lonely. And then when you just asking, okay, everyone doing themselves, it's kind of like uh, another loneliness. So they, they want to talk, they want to kind of collaborate. Yeah. So the second one is partner with our learner to create active engagement against about like, what do you expect and kind of like having a voice from the student point of view that kind of like also uh, being uh, helpful. The third one is be mindful of the cognitive load for our learners. Uh, our class may be not only one class that the student want. It could be they have like uh, in Australian context every uh, four month they do have like four, uh, four units. So subject one, subject two, subject three, subject four. So imagine like if they have to do with Zoom from the beginning morning until afternoon, the same thing like working. So with the Zoom, it's always kind of like meeting, 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 meeting. And we know that uh, if we do have meeting like uh, five meeting today, and then at the end of the day, we can like, uh, it's kind of like hard to compare with others. The same thing with the student as well. So uh, be mindful of uh, the load for our learner as well. And the fourth one is feedback to our learners. Uh, the same thing like face-to-face, -face. they also want to get feedback, of course. Uh, create opportunities for synchronized and asynchronous learning. So those who are not really familiar with this terminology, synchronized means like when we talk directly, like live one. Asynchronized is basically delay or kind of like recording, okay? So for uh, anyone who has uh, limited in terms of quota, limited in terms of connection, poor connection, they're more kind of like benefit having a synchronized. So they can uh, look at uh, recording later on. But if it is kind of like you can make sure that everything good, synchronized is much better to do that. Yeah. So learn how to use learning management system or uh, like uh, the tools that is proper. Uh, seven is create or curate. Uh, what does it mean is basically don't invent a new wheel. If we say, for example, I want to do it like uh, with the animation, how do we do that one? If we know that some tools or some apps can use for us, then yes, we can say, okay, uh, maybe we can use that one. But if we say, we don't have that one, so we can collaborate with other colleagues. For example, people who are in the computer system, uh, in the computer department, maybe they already have some invention. So we don't have to invent a new wheel. We want, we don't have to kind of like all the time starting from scratch, starting from that one. We may want to borrow or we may want to modify, okay? Uh, the eight, number eight is discuss and share audio, video and infographic prototype with colleagues because uh, we can share and we can learn each other. Uh, number nine, be vulnerable and transparent. Again, one more thing is about uh, make sure that we put our uh, shoes in the students shoes as well. So we have to understand about their situation. So number last one is number 10 is be mindful and learning can occur online and offline. So we need to plan accordingly uh, support learner to be agile. It means always motivated, want to uh, be uh, more, much faster in terms of flexible and responsive in developing their knowledge and also understanding. Okay, just uh, last uh, suggestion about, we often use Zoom like today. Yeah? Some of us may use a Google Meeting. So the question is that uh, in at Macquarie, for example, we've been uh, advised that not all facility you can use or which one is the more proper to use in terms of when you're teaching one. If you have class, uh, red mean is kind of like not really recommended, green mean highly recommended, yellow means you can or you don't have to. 
uh, like sharing uh, slide deck. Okay, we can use that one if we have kind of like a together one. Or using uh, share screen, it is not highly recommended if it is bigger class. So if it is small class, like less than 10, yes, you may allow the student to share screen, but otherwise not. Uh, or chat, uh, whether we allow them to do chatting. Uh, small one is better, we have conversation directly, but if it is kind of like a small medium, like 10, 20, 20, 40, yes, chatting can like do that one. Otherwise, if it is the bigger one, like 100, ooh, it's hard to kind of like uh, to control that. Okay. Uh, last but not least is some creativity. As I said, combine the combination between synchronous and asynchronous one, right? So we can say, for example, uh, if for the student who couldn't uh, come to the class, we may able to provide with the recording one. Okay, so make sure that the student can access to the recording one. Uh, according to a lot of studies, uh, students like when they got the, uh, what do you call it, the slide, the presentation slide one, because then they can learn somewhere else later on. It is all about how you use your voice and make students feeling happy, okay? Because happiness is kind of like a being uh, in the mood to learn, that's kind of like also increased about the outcomes. So let the last slide I'm going to show you, some studies have been done, comparison between face-to-face -face and then the online teaching uh, during, not during pandemic and online teaching during pandemic one. So how do you uh, to engage more your virtual student is by looking at you, we need to know our content because when we plan it, so we have to understand very deeply what we are saying. And then, of course, uh, practice. We need to practice one. Because when being recorded, uh, everything going to be recorded. So whether you, you make mistake or not make mistake, so it's going to be unlike uh, we don't feel enough uh, to prepare. And then a lot of kind of like mistake when we try to convince that if we're not practicing enough for us himself. And then last but not least is creatively visualize your audience. So we can just kind of like, if we've been uh, meeting with students before, say for example, I do have 10 students. I know who is uh, Pa Idris, I know who is Pa Dalimonte, I know uh, uh, anyone kind of like in my class. So I can imagine they are looking at me and then we kind of like together. But the problem is if it is new thing, uh, we just kind of like imagine that we are pretending in the bigger class and then we know them and then give smile <laughs> for your best. Uh, one recommendation I would like to do is for linguistic, for example, uh, collaboration in terms of uh, learning. Uh, so not only about collaboration teacher and the student, but also collaboration in terms of the sources. For example, uh, in my class for the uh, business project one, we combine above the internal sources, but external sources. Internal sources is basically, I often invite the guest lecture from Macquarie University itself, but for the external, I invite the lecture from uh, external like alumni, who's already working in the biggest company like Microsoft, Google, and so on, they give motivation to students. Students really like that one. For the linguistic, maybe we can invite the native speaker, right, from what is different between Australian and with the England, with European, in terms of their, their pronunciation. Or, or if we don't get the native, we can invite the alumni. Alumni like Uin Sumatera Utara, I believe uh, there are alumni uh, here in Sydney. That's what I knew uh, this event from uh, Mas Latif. Uh, you, we can use uh, our alumni to kind of like saying that uh, speak in English and then tell about the city where you live now uh, in plain English. So that then the student can ask many question live or in kind of like recording. So basically combination, collaboration, not only in terms of uh, the teacher and the student, but also in terms of resources and so on. I think uh, this is just kind of like my last slide. So the comparing between the impact of the uh, 
method of teaching, uh, whether this face-to-face, online uh, during the normal time, not the pandemic, and then online at the pandemic. What you can see here is basically uh, the survey asking students to score how what they think at the academic performance, their concentration, memory, and so on until their general health condition and mental health condition when they learn during face-to-face -face or in the class, when they're doing online during not pandemic time and then during the pandemic time. So there is kind of like three ways the, the question was asking. So academic performance, surprisingly enough, the, it was kind of like much, much better during the online normal time, 8.2. But between face-to-face -face and online during pandemic is not really much different. What surprisingly uh, for me is in terms of health condition. General health condition, uh, normal online is basically much higher comparatively during kind of like the online at the pandemic. Yeah? So you can see that the feeling of the happy and without the stress can like make them much, much more effective in terms of uh, learning as well. I think that's what uh, I want to convey and then hopefully it's giving some idea and also some uh, alternative teaching. Thank you very much. Thank you very much I, for uh, Dr. Muhyiddin for an insightful uh, presentations regarding the virtual, uh, virtual language instructions during the COVID-19 pandemic. What I got from uh, the presentation is that the transformation of a classroom is not necessarily uh, affecting the venue only, like um, transforming from the physical classroom into the virtual classroom, but also an, adoptions, an adopt, uh, adoption strategy to engage uh, more students actively in the classroom teaching process. And also, we may, I think that Indonesia Indonesian's, uh, Indonesian school, uh, school or Indonesian classroom may have been delayed in adopting strategy and transitional mode of a teaching delivery from offline to online class because uh, you have mentioned that the University of London um, has started the online classrooms at the very beginning by using the post before the era of, in the, era of the internet. And also, um, I got a several insights like um, how IT skills uh, uh, signifies the successful process of teaching and learning, like IT skills helps university students to gain access and a classroom material to be learned autonomously to keep up consistency of learning by the students. And also, um, it helps the teachers and the lecturers to post messages, teaching materials, question sheets, active or oh, activity sheets, wheresoever they might be. And um, I think the last is reconciled to the current, uh, to the current uh, pandemic situation, I think is a must. Because, you know, like um, this unprepared pandemic has uh, put uh, several impacts on uh, teaching and learning process at school, at the university. So reconciliations um, to the no what we call as um, normal, we can, we can turn back the time, you know, like in the previous time, because time has changed, uh, the global situation um, has changed as well. So I think that, I hope that the idea across, um, you have mentioned, can, um, could produce robust strategy and approach, an approach to teaching uh, during pandemic. Thank you very much uh, for Dr. Mohidin's of the insightful presentations. Now uh, we open Q&A session, so, uh, to the participants who want to ask some questions um, online and offline, so we give it a time. Can I got comments? Uh, can I start with that one? Uh, if anyone from the uh, in who in Sumatra Utara tell us what did you uh, do or what, what have you done uh, when this pandemic start to come? How, how, how the university uh, put the strategy? Pak Dalimonte mungkin.
thank you Pak Salahuddin, nice to see you Okay This first time I see you Even online situations And I just talked to uh, Mas Latif about you And okay, okay. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you in the seminars All right, I just would like to respond to the questions uh, from you related to the learning teaching process uh, in our university. Uh, <clears throat> me, myself, because, you know, my subject is, you know, speaking skill class. Yeah, for me, uh, during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, okay, I use, you know, uh, small uh, debating class uh, on, through online. Uh, I propose, uh, uh, you know, a case, a problem to the student, and then I ask student to respond to the problems, yeah, based on the question I have given them, yeah. Of course, after uh, giving the scenario of the problem, and yeah, do uh, do me things, okay. Actually, class debate uh, does not run as good as okay uh, offline meetings but i think it can work okay such as you know uh, there is uh, i can say one of the problem one of the case uh, i give to uh, the student such this one uh, there is a problem between you know between two person a man and a woman okay they love each other present and you know uh, but there is a problem between them, uh, okay? Uh, the, the, the prospective, uh, okay, uh, father-in-law is in love, okay, with the woman. And he is 45 years old, okay? And this is the problem. And I, I said this to my students, okay, what would you do if you were okay, in this condition? So through this uh, strategy, uh, the students feel free to talk. Yeah, feel free to talk. Yeah. And of course, I never uh, correct their mistakes in, in speaking. I just let them talking out without giving any correction. But at the end of the class, okay, I wrote down some sentences that uh, made in the wrong structure, so I give some correction. So yeah. I think, yeah. Okay, even uh, during uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we also can use, okay, some alternative strategy, yeah, to make a classroom alive. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Well, that's good, thank you. Uh, yes, I can see that you have tried to use the relevant situation where uh, even though it's kind of like Sinetron <laughs> situation, uh, I was thinking more about something to do close to uh, with the student uh, situation, like uh, maybe campaigns about something in the students. So I don't know whether uh, it could be like a little bit modified, much closer to the situation where the student face one. Uh, another one, uh, maybe suggestion is have or question in this one. Have you tried to also invite? Uh, industry guest lecture, say from the uh, journalists or from the TV presenter or anyone with kind of like something to do with the communication using the linguistic more and then say that, okay, this is kind of like uh, not only about kind of like looking at the content about the linguistic as well, but also maybe we can get insight about uh, the student how if they want to be to have career like that one. Uh, Salut. Yeah. May I ask you one question? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, because of the participants of the seminars are coming from the English teachers from junior high school and senior high school, and some mm -hmm. are coming from university. I think it's uh, quite relevant if you like to share us some strategy to motivate, yeah, to motivate students, especially at the level of yeah. junior high school. You know, mm -hmm. my own experience at, at home when I okay look at my children studying, yeah, through Zoom meetings. You know, 
uh, oh my god they are lacking of motivation they just uh, lying down on the bed okay and then to listen to their teachers okay talking through through your meeting i think this problem is also faced by some teachers here yeah maybe you have uh, some alternative solution yeah maybe you mm -hmm. have uh, let's say a strategy to motivate yeah how to motivate uh, uh, children starting from home okay and not just listen to the teachers without giving any response yeah to the mm -hmm. what the speaker saying what the teacher yeah. saying so on the zoom meeting okay yes. maybe you okay. have uh, yeah. yeah some some ideas sure sure uh yes uh well the situation not really different because i do have uh, my kid is also already uh starting high school just recently uh most of the time uh in the in the beginning they are really enthusiastic because this is something new kind of like a new game or new toys oh i will have to go to online doing it but you're right eventually when like after two months after three months they get bored if the, there is no strategy what i can see from uh, a lot of teacher they try to combine that with the game say like uh Com uh, instruction is kind of like combining about say like uh, have a look the video or the YouTube that kind of like uh, related uh, being trendy like BTS music for example uh, so give comment on that kind of like one of the song so in one hand it's kind of like try to motivate the student uh, because being a teacher we also need to kind of like uh, follow what the trend among this to uh, the younger generation as well like bts during that time is kind of like very very top hit so the teacher can say that okay choose one of the the, the newest or the favorite song from bts but at the same time i do understand not all the students uh, like bts song so this kind of like if anyone who didn't like or is not the fan of the bts can you find some other song with the same instruction uh, look at the wording and then what do you think about whether this is encouraging or whether this is kind of like more advice or this is just kind of like for fun something like that one so it's basically uh, trying to connect what they like during that one so in that way a uh, lot of the voice coming in yeah i want to say i want to say what people kind of like are very motivated want to do that one as well including with the book the genre uh, a lot of genre is like uh, every student has different genre uh, interest but uh, what they try here is kind of like you have even you don't like say for example uh, non-fiction but try once a while you also need to read non-fiction so they kind of like trying to uh, this is in terms of the english language yeah uh, usually they use kind of like a romeo and juliet book but then that's kind of like very old uh, history one so they try to combine with the new one so who is ever the uh, favorite authors in australia uh, for the teenager they try uh, to connect with them that's maybe my uh, answer Oh, thank you very much for uh, Dr. Mudin. That's a yeah. very good idea and perspective regarding to how to um, how to transition the offline or physical uh, classroom into uh, the online classroom. Uh, thank yeah. you very much because um, uh, now the time for uh, presentations by Dr. Rahmat, Dr. Rahmat Hidayat, uh, Dr. Rahmat Hussein. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sorry for misspelling the name. <laughs> um, on um, learning models, yeah. Thank you very much for Dr. Muhyiddin for your insightful um, ideas and perspective. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, today we're gonna have a sessions on uh, Dr. Rahmat Hussein, yeah. Um, when it comes to the pandemic of COVID-19, since its release, 
It has prompted a certain modifications in a several parts of life, particularly in university students' learning methods. It may be observed in the normalization of the use of electronic gadgets in the classroom, as opposed to the traditional physical classroom meetings that we had previously. Because of their lack of expertise and access to gadgets, several academics feel unprepared. They believe that the online classroom fails to meet the needs of the teaching and the learning, as well as knowledge transfer. It may be difficult to transition from an offline to online classrooms, online teaching mode, since this necessitates knowledge. Correct abilities in using technology to assist the company and insight into adopting a class meeting curriculum to a virtual classroom settings. As a result, both instructors and students must be adept at adjusting learning models to the current scenario, in which virtually nothing harkens back to the past, including the educational system, the flexibility of academics throughout the pandemic in terms of academic items might be used to judge their excellence. As a result, despite the fact that there is no means to go back in the time, the quality encourages dynamic learning and intelligence instructions models. Okay, therefore, let us listen to Dr. Ahmad Hussein, who will give us a plenty of insights regarding to how to characterize and implement appropriate learning models that will contribute to the success of teaching and learning process in the classroom context during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, um, let me address some uh, biography of uh, Dr. Rahmat Hussain. Uh, Dr. Rahmat Hussain is a currently a faculty member of the State University of Medan. He graduated from uh, State University of Medan in 1987, majored in English language education. And then he pursued, uh, he pursued a Master of Education in Language and Literacy Education at the Aiken University in Melbourne, Australia. He completed his PhD in language education from Malang State University in 2013. And also, Dr. Ahmad Hussein wrote a number of articles uh, under the themes of teaching English as a foreign language, English uh, for young learners, and curriculum development for English language teachings. To Dr. Ahmad Hussein, other stage is yours. Okay. Thank you, Pak Idris. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, thank you, Pak Muhammad, and particularly all the beloved audiences uh, in this face-to-face, -face, and also maybe there are some in the online, yeah, or in the YouTube. And thank you also to all the community. Yeah. I think I have to stand up. Yeah. Uh, I was asked long time ago, actually almost three months ago, yeah, by Pak Muhammad uh, to have such a discussion in this inter international seminar. Until I forgot, yeah. <laughs> until I forgot, because of so many activities, actually also. Uh, that involved me, given by our university, in this case, UNIMED. Yeah, at the same time, actually, now I am involved in what is called by training of trainer of hot literacy. Yeah? That is why I forgot, almost forgot about it. I thought that it is not uh, organized anymore. Yeah? Until three days ago, yeah? Uh, Pak Muhammad uh, texted me, Pak Rahmat, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Recording I said, stopped. I said then, hopefully that it will not at the same time with my activity as the participant to take the post-test of our TOT. Yeah? At, uh, after we also train some teachers, yeah? also here at Caribbean, a uh, month ago, and then we need to uh, facilitate uh, the teachers at schools yeah, practicing the model which is called by R2R, Reading to Learn. Also, actually, uh, the speaker from Australia, yeah? this is based on a genre, just so genre-based approach. I think that all of uh, Bapa and Ibu here and all the audience, yeah, 
uh, understand or know about it. And then I was given this uh, opportunity to discuss about learning models. That time, actually, I also argued why not it, it was done at Winso. Why? Yeah, because I would like to involve Bapak and Ibu in a kind of model that will be done directly, yeah, which is called by uh, outdoor activity, contextual teaching and learning. So we'll do it outside. But if it is possible, Recording in progress. if you think that it will be uh, important for you to know the kind of the model, we can do it also in this room, I guess. But I will choose uh, some of the objects that will be observed later. Okay, yeah. Here we go, learning models. I do believe Bapak and Ibu, how many learning models that Bapak and Ibu has applied at school? Yeah, Bapak and Ibu. Any some of them are actually are very familiar to me, yeah? Although you are wearing your mask. Okay, your mask. Yeah, some are still actually recognized, yeah? Okay. It could be, maybe. Long time ago, you are with, you are with me, yeah? Okay, Bapak Ibu. What kind of learning models that you use in your learning, uh, in, yeah, yeah, in your learning activities in the classroom? Or let's say in your lesson plan that you have actually stated. Yeah, Bapak Ibu? Am I with human beings? Or only penampakan? Ya, yeah, Bapak Ibu. Ngajar nggak pakai learning model ya? Model-modelan aja, asal-asalan. Waduh, kasihan dosa kita besar sekali kepada Allah ya. Tersesat nanti anak-anak kalau kita nggak punya persiapan. But, I believe that Bapak Ibu, of course, ya, yeah, have uh, used them. And I do believe, it could be maybe all what we are going to discuss here, yeah, are actually been uh, applied with Bapak and Ibu. Maybe the other one uh, is actually suitable for a certain topic at school, yeah, at school with KD blah and KD blah, yeah, basic competencies. But in the university, of course, uh, a dif different case, yeah. And then. Uh, maybe in the university it could be also, and also maybe in the uh, schools, yeah, like uh, Prop just now uh, presented to us, kind of project-based learning. That is one of the uh, umbrella, yeah, related to the 2013 curriculum that has been implemented in our country, yeah. But in the university it's a bit different, yeah, KKNE. Yeah, most of us actually uh, use, it could be kind of project-based learning, even project-based learning, yeah? not problem-based learning only. Yeah? Uh, but of course, as Pa Salahuddin just now informed, yeah, I think we have almost uh, the same uh, case, yeah? problem related to implementing this online learning during this pandemic. Okay? Well, now let's take a look at the first one. What learning model that we are going to uh, see? Yeah, I just try to pick out the models that are uh, highlighted by our government. Yeah, in the in the 2013 curriculum. Yeah. Bapak Ibu, you have known that this learning model actually is a kind of conducted chronologically, yeah? starting from the very beginning, even particularly in the main activity or the core activity. But there are also some ideas that we need to make uh, the class condition yeah, our students in the pre-activity. Yeah? So, how smooth that we implement this to our students. Yeah, of course we need to take a look at later the syntax. I believe again and again that Bapak and Ibu, you have done this. Although you haven't uh, stated it in your lesson plan before, before, yeah? But I do believe that you conducted what it is called by 
scientifically executed. Yeah. So this learning model is a frame. If you take a look at the screen here, is the black yeah, square is the frame of the screen. And then if you take a look at the slide, the white one lines in the slide is the frame. Yeah? Uh, that is the frame. So there are so many things actually uh, done yeah, in this uh, frame. Yeah, like uh, as it is stated that uh, in the 2030 curriculum, the umbrellas are such kind of discovery learning, problem-based learning, project-based learning, yeah, inquiry learning. Uh, I also include here task-based learning as well as contextual teaching and learning. Even in this pandemic, I think Bapak and Ibu at school mostly use TBL, yeah? task-based learning. Because when I also visited school or when I discuss it to the teachers, they just said, Pak, pokoknya anak-anak disuruh ke sekolah menjemput soal, kirim soal, eh, menyerahkan tugas menjemput soal. Oh, sampai segitu-gitunya jadi belajarnya. Iya, Pak. Or we uh, go to a certain area, let's say we are here in this center, yeah, let's say this is the school, and then we are uh, going to the northern part where some of our students are living in that area and then we go to one uh, student's house to have yeah maybe only 30 minutes of one hour at most a meeting and then the other day go to the western part and then go to the southern and the eastern part something like that oh that is actually the beautiful yeah the beautiful uh, moments in this pandemic era. If not, maybe Bapak and Ibu never visited students' house. Except in, I don't know whether it is in junior high school or mostly in primary school. Ya. Ada sekolah, apa, kunjungan rumah ya, home visit. Apakah hanya uh, the counselor, apa Bapak Ibu yang bertugas sebagai a counselor saja yang home visit oh you also did something like that but that is actually the issue yeah uh, Pak Prof Sulahuddin just now has actually clearly stated how we can make it into the online learning yeah rather uh, whether it is synchronous or uh, asynchronous yeah by blended also kind of flip learning and so on yeah yeah those are actually the uh, complete names yeah now let's take a look at discovery learning what is discovery learning to discover uh, there must be something hidden yeah that is the idea something that unknown yeah and then we need to discover it we need to know about it in this case uh, in our KD, ya, Bapak Ibu yang di university, sorry, I am focusing on to the junior or senior high school related to KD, ya, basic competencies. Nah, basic competencies-nya kalau yang bahasa Inggris ya, selalu tuh dibuat oleh pemerintah, uh, for example, uh, menerapkan fungsi sosial, struktur teks, dan unsur kebahasaan. Itu di negaranya Pak Prof. Solahuddin yang sekarang, ya. Karena Prof. Solahuddin has been staying there for about 10 or 11 years as informed by uh, Pak Muhammad. Ya. From Australia, genre-based approach. Ya. Selalu social function, generic structure, and linguistic features. That I don't know whether many teachers uh, Hopefully not here, yeah. Of oftenly uh, forget about the language features, just focusing on to the social function and generic structures, yeah, and forget about 
the ideas of the linguistic features. For example, ya eh, terkait dengan teks interaksi transaksional yang sederhana aja kita ambil dulu mengenai jati diri gitu ya, yang very basic at grade seven for example. Nah, the problem is again, how could our students discover such kind of text that can be either printed or spoken. So either it is speaking, listening, or writing, reading. Nah itu para punggawa di pusat itu sudah bersusah payah membuat KD itu ya kelihatannya. Although some of the KD that I still argue ya yeah, because in KD 3, in KD 4 sometimes it's not uh, not clearly stated ya yeah, match. For example in KD 3 it is stated that by giving and asking information about let's say personal identity ya. Yeah memberi dan meminta informasi terkait jati diri secara lisan atau tulis nah jadi kita ada pilihan lisan lisan can be either speaking or listening and tulis can be either writing or uh, reading but in KD4 there is no meminta, memberi dan meminta informasinya dan tidak ada lagi lisan dan tulis so how could as teacher we understand about the KD itself, the statement? Nah itu yang sering saya jumpai juga dari Bapak Ibu, terutama Bapak Ibu yang, sorry, pasti tidak ada berangkal yang di sini, Bapak Ibu yang dari Kemenak, baru satu bulan yang lalu, barusan lagi me-WA saya, karena udah selesai, mereka tinggal ujian, katanya mungkin minta saran kepada saya. Bapak Ibu Kemenak yang... Medan tidak ada ikut waktu itu, mostly from Aceh, Riau ada satu batu bara kisaran ya kalau tidak salah. Nah itu mereka, mereka akhirnya menyatakan, iya pak ya kayaknya selama ini kami menyesatkan, saya menyesatkan anak-anak. Apa? I, ken, mengapa saya bilang? Iya pak seperti yang bapak bilang, permintaan KD-nya ini a, ah, saya ngasihkannya suka-suka hati saya pokoknya. Pokoknya saya sudah baca itu, saya pokoknya kasihkan aja semuanya tentang uh, jati diri, jati diri. Seperti apa, ya, pokoknya jati diri pak, suruh tulis, suruh apa gitu. Loh, jadi itu pernyataan yang menyatakan lisan dan tulis itu nggak di, dipahami. Makna menyatakan memberi dan meminta informasi itu nggak di, uh, dipahami, tidak dicamkan uh, itu dengan baik. You didn't understand about it? Kayaknya enggak lah pak, pokoknya udah ini. Wah setelah dibimbing, diarahkan, and then they realize, oh ya pak, ya pantas. Nah kita udah capek ngajar kan, I believe that you have been very tiresome preparing ya yeah, your teaching set from lesson plan until assessment, and then executing it in the classroom, and then what happened after we give the test? Below uh, mastery achievement, di bawah KKM pak. Padahal KKM-nya cuma 65 loh Pak. Ya itu tadi, karena keliru kan. Orang mintanya melatih anaknya khusus untuk speaking aja dulu kok Bapak. Ngajarnya suka-suka hati. Ada writing, ada reading. Maunya yang reading, yang enak-enak aja karena reading aja yang enak. Ya jadi kemana anaknya? Facilitating the students. Ya, speaking ability-nya. Nah, oke. Okay. Oke, okay, then let's please we ask for God. Ya, yeah, to Allah. Yeah, to forgive us yeah, for our past. But from now on, please yeah, try to understand what the KD statement first. And then later you need to come to this learning model. Oh, kalau ini topiknya, if this is the topic, what should I do related to the learning model? Is it okay if it is discovery learning? Oh, it should be problem-based learning, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yeah, Bapak and Ibu. But now it is said that discover, to discover. Oh, if you are going to make a kind of uh, transactional interaction by giving and asking information about personal identity, oh, this is actually that the 
construction. This is the social function. The social function should be stated, blah 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 here, and then all the asking and giving information related to the genetic structure should be there in the text or in the communication. And there must be a kind of linguistic features, so not any uh, as we like, yeah, related to the linguistic features that we need to use. Yeah. Nah, kalau enggak nanti seperti saya long long time ago, what I could understand, what I could only say that I am going to Miss Kangkung, gitu ya, I am goreng to Miss Kangkung. Itu aja yang diingat-ingat seperti itu belajar bahasa Inggrisnya. Karena tadi berangkali misleading, ya. Yeah. Okay, so Bapak Ibu, ya, yeah, that's it actually, ya, yeah. the new truth. Are you going to implement this? Ya, yeah, try to discover, ya, yeah, to discover. Although to some, ya, yeah, at the very beginning of this uh, 2013 curriculum, this discovery learning model is a kind of booming, viral. Kalau boleh di Indonesia ini semuanya. Kalau udah pakai YouTube itu, TikTok, pasti semuanya discovery learning selalu kita lihat. Itulah saking viralnya. Padahal, in fact, that this learning model maybe not really suit to the topic that need to be discussed, need to be facilitated to our students. Ya, yeah? particularly as I said just now. To which actually language skills that we are going to build our students is it related to oral skills or written skills? Whether it is speaking or listening or writing and reading, or if we related to the productive and receptive, whether it is speaking or write, uh, writing, or whether it is. Listening or reading. Pak Rahmat tutup aja lah sekarang udah pening kepala kami Pak ngikutinya gitu ya kayaknya ya. Bapak Ibu masih bersama saya yang di ruangan ini masih masih bisa ngikuti apa yang saya sampaikan <laughs> masih ya Insya Allah ya oke okay. ya karena memang ini sulit kelihatan eh mudah sekali kelihatannya tapi begitu saya coba konfirmasi saya lihat RPP-nya saya tanyai itu bengong-bengong gurunya, ya. Kalau belum sebelum di, uh, di di dampingi, ya. Before I facilitate, ya. We actually not I, teachers and also uh, lecturers, ya. Ada at least P berpasangan. Karena di dunia nyatanya kan teacher yang tahu mengeksekusinya, ya. Kalau dosen kan. Taunya ah dosen kan nggak masuk terjun ke lapangan gitu, iya tidak memang tetapi membekali students juga jadi harus ngelirik selalu ke sekolah supaya link and match ya supaya nggak keliru. Oke, okay. now how this discovery learning actually executed the steps ya? Yeah? Nah the steps maybe uh, ya yeah, you can see it ya. Yeah? Nah ini bahasanya bahasa bahasa teori lah. Ya, sementara saya alirannya aliran yang praktis. Saya suka yang praktis langsung-langsung ongoing. Ayo kita lakukan execution, ya execution. Tapi but I need to let you know. Yeah, we start with the st uh, stimulation. What is it actually behind the ideas of stimulation? Anak-anak begini-gini, apakah itu maksud stimulation? Oh no, the teacher of the class and the introduction of the material being taught. Nah, mengeksekusi gitu. Kalau dulu Oke okay, anak-anak, hari ini, oh, well, students, today we are going to teach personal identity. Apakah langsung-langsung seperti itu yang dimaksud dengan stimulation di sini? Kan saya tadi mau introducing the topic. Bapak Ibu seperti apa? Seperti itu? Tidak ya? Ah, tidak, Bapak Ibu bilang. Mengestimulasinya, oh seperti ini Pak, for example. Eh... Uh, Oke, okay, my name is Rahmat Hussein. Ya, yeah. I've got married. Ya, yeah, with a Malay lady, with three sons. I live at Jalan Purnawirawan. I live at Jalan Purnawirawan, 
Number 69, Medan Estate. Okay, dear students, what do you think that I inform to you? Nah, saya tidak langsung-langsung mengatakan today we are going to study about personal identity. Rather than to stimulate their prior knowledge, their understanding, so that they can listen critically and then try to conclude or make assumption about information that I give to them. If we let someone about our name, so is it the problem? Maybe our students, because they are still grade 7 at the very beginning and they never studied about English, let's say in the very remote area, where there is no also English course, except a course conducted by the teacher, maybe ya, mungkin gurunya masih punya waktu untuk memberikan les, gitu. Kalau enggak, no English at all, ya. I say Rahmat Hussein. What's that? Oh, itu kan nama bapa. Ya. Nah, usia and so on. Itu kan usia bapa. Itu kan tentang keluarga bapa. So what do you think? Kayaknya bapa ingin memperkenalkan tentang diri bapa lah. It's okay, enggak apa-apa ya. Namanya mereka juga belum bisa bahasa Inggris. Never ever heard that one. Maybe, ya. In the very remote area, but in this city, in this city. In Medan, be careful. Ya, kalau kita enggak hati-hati, malah kita kalang kabut dibuat anak-anak. Mereka dari berangkali kindergarten, berangkali sejak dilahirkan sama orang tuanya udah kalau bisa bahasa Inggris gitu ya kan. That is very big challenge to us. So we need to know about this, ya syntax, the syntax, the procedure, the step by step of the model. Okay. And then we need to problem statement. What is the problem statement? Yeah, in this case that we need to say yeah, to the students. So if you are going to have to make a kind of personal identity, yeah, giving and asking information about your personal identity, then how would you how would you do that? If it is in the speaking, nah. So that maybe I would like also to show video, karena tadi yang speaking yang saya inginkan itu yang bla 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 text personal identity lisan menyusun yang KD empatnya menyusun misalnya, dah jadi speaking. Nah kasihlah video tadi dikatakan sama prop apa juga ya boleh kita ambil dari YouTube. Oh we can create ourselves. Maybe we can also ask help from our higher grade students that we know that their English is good and their pronunciation is good. And then we need to ask them for help. We give the script, they make the conversation and we video them. We capture their dialogue. Nah bisa, kenapa mesti tidak bisa? Enggak bisa pak, saya buat video. Itu paling sederhana ya. Ambil anak-anak murid, tapi dari kelas yang berbeda, jangan di kelas yang sama gitu ya. So that it will be new for them. Ya. So, nah itu said again and again, social function, generic structure and linguistic features. How should we make a dialogue? What should be stated first and what should be the ending of our dialogue? For example, something like that. And then again, if it is in the form of dialogue, how about if it is in the form of written? Oh, ternyata mintanya menyusun teks tulis tapi dialog. It means that we didn't involve our students much in speaking, but how to facilitate the understanding to create, yeah, to be a writer, yeah, to make the scenario. Nah, kalau yang written itu justru kita menggugah anak-anak kita to make them to be a scenario writer. Because it's not speaking, but the topic is also the same. Kenapa harus gitu pak? Ya itu KD-nya yang meminta kita. As I said just now, that all the experts in our country have thought about it and then decided this, this, this the topic that should be taught to the students. Okay. And then the next one, data collection. 
how are we going to activate our students to collect the data related to their personal identity. Nah, muncullah yang berikutnya, students worksheet. Menggunakan students worksheet. Kalau di sekolah terkenal dengan istilah L KPD, ya kan? Lembar kerja peserta didik. Kalau di perguruan tinggi ya lembar kerja peserta uh, mahasiswa LKM seperti itu. Nah, ya, it can be also implemented in the university. Why not? Ya. Yeah. Nah, whether they will do it individually, in pair, or in groups, or classically, yeah, it depends on you, the teachers. Depend on us. That is why I said that we need to understand the KDE first before we execute, before we choose, before we select the very suitable uh, learning model. Yeah, okay. And then they will do kind of observation the objects, yeah, interviewing, yeah, with the resource, doing an experiment alone or others. It depends on again and again. Yeah. Nah, it could be that we ask someone to. Uh, come to another student, ask him, yeah, give your information about you yourself first, and then ask him who he is, get the information from him. Uh, you can do it in an in interview if it is a kind of uh, speaking, but if it is a kind of uh, writing, and then it can be that the students as a what. Uh, a journal, yeah, a journalist. Sorry, a journalist coming to someone to the resource respondent. Excuse me, sir. Uh, could I know your name? Uh, right, because it is the process of writing, and the text later in the form of writing. Okay, blah blah and blah 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 blah. After that, data processing. Do you think that our student can be? Doing this data processing by him or herself in the classroom, or should be at least in pair, or should be in groups. Yeah, again and again, it depends on us that we understand about the KD. Yeah, that we actually breaking down into the indicator pencapaian kompetensi. Itu ya, ikatan pemuda karya ya. Itu paling populer kalau di Medan kan. IPK itu pasti masuk selalu, selalu disebut-sebut IPK ya. Karena dari KD kan harus ada breakdown into IPK ya. The indicators, the achievement of uh, indikator pencapaian uh, kompetensinya. Itu harus kita breakdown. Ya, yeah. at least two. But we need to think are two IPK enough? Can actually this two IPK if have been achieved by the student can reflect the KD that should be achieved tujuan akhirnya kan men mencapai KD tapi kita pecah-pecah dulu jadi IPK nah we need to reconsider 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 ya yeah? as i said only at least two as it is stated by the experts also but for me for KD3 it is not only two at least three even four Why? Tadi because there are three, yeah, three basic things, three basic components that we need to understand. Social function first, the second, the third, yeah, kan dia social function, genetic structure, and linguistic features. Itu saja tiga. Cukup enggak ni waktunya dua kali empat puluh minit. Cukup enggak ni waktunya dua kali empat puluh lima minit ya, junior and senior high school. Mau ada list ni, ada speaking. Wah, apa bisa di cover semua ya? Itu kan again and again that we need to consider, that we need to understand and again and again critically read the KD so that we can choose the learning model. Yeah, so that we know how we are going to do with the data processing with the students in our next LK or worksheet. Yeah, okay. And then after they have collected or they have processed the data, yeah, it can be in pair. If it is speaking, for example, if it is writing or reading or listening in a group, group of 
three or four or five, but not six, yeah. No. But in this pandemic era, I think four is okay, yeah, because there must be physical distancing, yeah. No. Okay. The students are doing review of the rightness, the hypothesis. Do we, yeah, uh, are we correct about what we have done, yeah, during our process? With the hypothesis before, or if it is, yeah, uh, we should start with blah, and then the social function should be stated in blah, the genetic structure should be stated in blah 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 blah, and then the linguistic features should be referring to blah tenses, to blah words, to blah phrases, to blah clauses. Yeah, there are so many things. Pak banyak kali yang Ya, kalau enggak enggak usah jadi guru bahasa Inggris kan begitu itu aja pilihannya ya kan udah terlanjur kita jadi we are teachers or lecturers of English ya yeah. whatever it is we should know that we should understand that so that we are actually on the track of executing the KD ya yeah, the topic in this case and then at the end of this after verifying Generalization. The student will study to make a conclusion. Yeah. All right. Generalization is the last step. If the learners have done the generalization, oh, this is it. Katanya Farah Queen, kan gitu ya. This is it. Gitu. Jadilah black forestnya. Ya kan? Black forest itu seperti apa, bapak ibu? How are you going to make black forest? Very simple, kan? Yeah, very simple. Although I am not master chef, but I can make it very quick. I take matches. I, okay, I light it and then I throw it to the forest and then there will be black forest. Is that? Itu kan black forest itu kan? Why no? Why no? Black forest is not something like that. What's your argument? Kan itu dia kan? Itulah dia Black Forest. Yang para penguasa-penguasa itu membuat Black Forest itu kan Kalimantan udah banyak yang jadi Black Forest. Kan itu maksudnya kan? Oh no sir. In fact Black Forest is here something like in this box. Cake box. Ya? Yeah? Is the color black or brown actually? Black Forest. Dark brown ya? Yeah? Karena tapi enggak tahu juga. Ya Pak, Pak, uh, Pak Muhammad ini black, black atau brown, Pak? Saya ini memang apa ya? My color bad. Kalau grup band tuh, kalau grup band itu namanya color me bad gitu ya. Buta buta warna. Tapi enggak buta hijau ya, buta warna. Ya, ayah ah, ini enggak tahu ini warnanya ini warna abu-abu ya, bukan warna hitam. Ini warnanya uh, warna oranye ya, bukan warna coklat misalnya. Memang ayah ini but, ya itulah laki-laki banyak memang dideteksi bad color ya misalnya. Tapi saya lihat ini, ah tapi itu tadi lain ya because name naming naming of cookies the name is black forest. Dari mana ya idenya kok jadi black forest gitu ya? Nah we forget about that one for example. That is the generalization. Oh udah stepnya udah benar ininya uh, generic structurenya sudah oke okay. and then Linguistic featuresnya udah oke, okay. kita pakai yang present tense, kita udah pakai adjective, kita udah pakai noun phrase, nggak pakai past tense kayak gini. Oke, okay, nanti cross check in the theory and then the teacher, we as teacher need to facilitate. That is why we are called in this new era is teacher as facilitator, not teacher. Nah, that is actually that we need to change our mindset. Walaupun nanti ke kelihatannya seperti kemarin sore itu masih melatih uh, guru yang PPG peer teaching, Pak Bapak Ibu udah capek kan buat RPP yang dari tim. Iya, coba direfleksi, coba diingat-ingat. Murid-muridnya tadi aktif apa enggak ya? Siapa yang banyak bicara? Hei apa? Waktu di awal kayaknya saya. Oke, yang ini di tahap berikutnya. Iya, iya. Nah, lagi-lagi kan kok jadinya Bapak Ibu capek. Padahal kita sebagai facilitator, we just trigger. Nah, again and again, this is one of the 
model. Bapak Ibu, saya sudah dimarahi sama Pak Muhammad. Tuh, Pak Rahmat kalau sudah di depan kelas suka lupa dengan waktu. Baru satu, Bu, dari enam ya, yang lima lagi pelajari sendiri udah Bapak Ibu lakukan. Karena saya disuruh, Pak, stop dulu supaya ada tanya jawab. Oke. Okay. Bapak Ibu, ya, kayaknya itu ya. For example aja dulu Pak ya, satu di sana. Students may have to discover how something works or apply information in order to provide an accurate simulation. That is just the idea. But I have actually put the model as just now personal identity, ya, yeah, for example. And at the end is black forest, that is just to uh, trigger Bapak and Ibu, ya, yeah, about it. Okay, Bapak Ibu, that's all I think. Uh, thank you very much for um, Dr. Hussein for insightful uh, presentations um, regarding to the online or, or learning models. Like what I've um, noted here is, is that we have to um, break down between the traditional learning and active learning, like a traditional learning teachers or lecturers uh, serves as information providers, but in active learning, uh, teachers and uh, lecturers serve as uh, information facilitators. And also like uh, we have to post into a student's uh, point of view rather than a teacher's point of view like um, we conducted in the previous uh, traditional classrooms. So today, because of the pandemic of COVID-19 situations, um, doesn't change at all. So that's why we need to um, to transform or to adapt to a new normal, a new normal uh, academic setting, especially in, in a classroom teaching context. And also, um, uh, thank you very much uh, for, um, for the insightful um, experience and uh, um, presentations. Now uh, we open a Q&A se uh, sessions for, um, for the participants here by in the venue or on, online on, at Zoom. Please, um, we please to the questioners to raise our questions. Silence is golden, yeah, Bapak Ibu. Smiling is sadoka, sodako. Dari sana, oh itu ada ibu sana yang di sana juga ada, please. Woi, woi. Tian. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. I am Yutika Sari. I am an alumni of Applied Linguist English Linguistic from Unimed. Uh, actually, I would like to ask about the discovery learning that actually Sir Rahmat told us before that. Uh, we have to give the stimulation as the first step of that discovery learning by giving them like brainstorming and by asking some questions that can make or stimulate the students to understand what we mean. My question is, uh, is there another method uh, besides it by giving them a worksheet, for example, some questions like what is your name, where do you live, or something like that, and uh, they have to conclude what is it actually? What we want, what, what we want to talk today, and we can go to the this, we can go to the discussion, and we can get the stimulation itself. So that's my question. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, the questions. Directly. Any other questions? Any other questions from uh, dear participants? Yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm Dian. Uh, I want to ask a question that you uh, told before that we need to uh, facilitate the students. 
uh, I've taught uh, the senior high school before, uh, and then I also did what Saramat said, like we facilitate the student, and then because of the teenagers, they feel shy and hard to talk or over give the opinion of them, and then just keep silent, even they want to say, but because of their shyness, they just keep silent. Uh, my question is how to encourage them to open their mouth and elaborate their opinion in, in front of their friend. Thank you. All right, thank you for the question by Dion. Yeah. Like um, at the that for teen students, feeling no attractions to the classroom engagements, so how to um, ask them to engage in more classroom activities. I think that's the questions. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Any other questions? All oh, right. Yes, please, sir. Any other questions, dear participants? Zoom, oh. Zoom. All right, what about on Zoom? Is there a question? No question. Okay, maybe, uh, sorry, moderator, if there is no more, maybe after this, yeah, maybe you can have another question. Okay. Rizky, Rizky, siapa tadi? Oh, Tika, ya? Oh, Atika, loh, Atika. Halo, Atika, sorry. Tika, Dian, itu ada siapa? Ya, yeah. oke. Okay. Forget about the names, because so many names in my... <laughs> yeah. Oke, okay. stimulus and asking students' names. Yes, why not? Why not? That is another. Ya, yeah. I just give for example, because in my area, ya, yeah, the student have doesn't know about English at all, starting from the beginning at grade seven, for example. Wah, jangan-jangan nanti masa, malah bahasa Indonesia-nya juga masih marpasir-pasir gitu ya. Jangan dong bahasa Inggrisnya, bahasa Indonesia marpasir-pasir. Karena masih pakai bahasa daerah gitu ya. Why not? Mungkin juga terpaksa kayak double languages ya. Bilingual nanti. Isi guarmo, kan gitu kan. What's your name? Pakai-pakai begitu barangkali, bukan siapa namamu mungkin. It's okay, why not? And then after that, eh, asking kok nanya nama saya ya, asking about my name, asking, asking, and how many. Yeah. So what are we going to study now? Yeah. If they know about English and they can respond in, kayaknya apa ya, ma'am, uh, about ourselves, mungkin-mungkin begitu ya, about myself, about me, not know about how personal identity-nya belum bisa barangkali. Ya, yeah. why you? Because you ask my name, you ask my hobby, you ask my uh, my address, my age, for example. Ya, yeah. ya. Yeah. So you ask about me, me myself, for example. Yeah, that that is actually the clue how you trigger the students in stimulate that we are going to do about that, and then the student will be focusing. Oh, our focus today is about it, about personal identity, not any other one. Ya. Yeah. Uh, okay, if you can make it something like that directly, that is better than I just say, Echo, hello, my name is Rahma Usain, rather than we introduce ourselves. Yeah? Why not? Yeah, that is, there are so many, many. Please ask. Coba tanya dulu temannya, namanya siapa. Nah, itu tanya ke sana, tanya. Nah, kita bisa juga kan? Not we ask our students, but we ask the students ask. Yeah? His or her classmate. Oke. Okay. Nah, kalau Dian ini nanyanya ini terkait dengan uh, psikologi ini larinya ke sana ini ya. So, uh, my students just keep silent. Oke, okay. if I ask you uh, Dian, why do you think that they are keeping silent? What is actually the root cause? Apa ya akar masalah sebenarnya? Feel shy. 
Why are do you think they are feeling shy? Yeah, so in this case that we need to, yeah, we need to facilitate, to motivate their self-confidence. That is actually the problem about self-confidence. You just say, no worries, this is not our, English, uh, not our language. No worries, it's okay, just say what. Yeah, just keep motivating our students while uh, teaching. Even try once. How if you know that there are some of your students are always keeping silent and then put them into one group? Boro-boro lah pak, disuruh kelompok sendiri semuanya bangsa keep silent. Ya kan harus bertanggung jawab, responsible. Nah kita we need to make trial and error ya, in this case doing experiment also. Because there are so many students, ini kalau enggak enggak speak up, speak up, speak up. Ya, nanti takut salah, takut salah. Yang Jangan pernah nanti kalau dia salah di uh, ditegur as Pak Muhammad give actually the model just now let them let them say their ideas ya yeah. campur-campur enggak apa-apa campur-campur campur-campur itu enak seperti es campur pecal kalau enggak dicampur-campur enggak enak dia pasti ya gado-gado enak nah tapi dalam hal ini kita uh, slow but sure guide them to model the correct way the correct ones okay just keep motivating them to speak up ya yeah. nah coba kita ambil contoh contoh anak-anak yang pendiam ternyata dia berhasil gitu ya yeah. nah kalau bisa dicari misalnya entah YouTube entah apa boleh nah coba lihat itu nah ternyata dia berhasil kan misalnya seperti itu jadi don't don't worry about uh, whether you are going to be said ya yeah, wrong yang jadi masalah memang kadang kala itu friends ya tapi saya nggak tahu teman-teman nggak terjadi di kelas kita friends soal kali kok bahasa Inggris belum apa-apa udah dibunuh gitu ya kan gimana meninggal lah kalau gitu kita pun jangan-jangan ikut meninggal nanti motivasinya ya kan belum apa-apa kawannya sendiri nah kawannya ini yang perlu kita uh, dia sakit sebenarnya ada sakit jiwa itu kan berarti kan Sakit jiwa lah dia, belum apa-apa udah membunuh, membunuh karakter tuh lebih berbahaya daripada membunuh langsung gitu ya kan. Kalau karakternya dibunuh itu berbahaya. Makanya di KD kan kita buat di RPP kita kan, oh ini saya mau speaking. Dia harus percaya diri, satu kata kunci harus kita bina. Bekerja sama dan bertanggung jawab dan saling menghargai. Pak nanti gimana itu kerja? Ya memang itu, kita kasih model sebagai guru. Urusan langsung-langsungnya itu nanti guru PPKN sama guru agama. Kita hanya modeling bisanya. Ya, karena itu bukan kawasan, kita indirect, indirect teaching. Nah untuk memotivasi. Nah kasih kesempatan ya. Nah, kan ternyata use your positive educative response or reinforcement to anybody in the classroom. Make them feel secure at the very beginning when we are teaching in the classroom. And if it is possible, make them miss you, Bapak Ibu. Ya, ya kayak tadi. Ada tukang pengingat, harus ada juru pengingat di kelas. Kalau enggak, itu anak-anak enggak mau keluar. Udah bel kuat-kuat pun enggak dengar itu mereka. Kalau they miss you. Ya, mereka mereka lupa yang biasanya kalau matematika, Pak permisi apa? Ya, Kenapa? Mau I want to wash my hand ya kan mau pergi ke toilet. Oh iya. Tapi sama kita lupa dia kalau dia tadi enggak sarapan, lupa dia kalau sebentar lagi tuh bel berbunyi, lupa segala-galanya. Nah, kalau you can make them feel confident and feel secure. Itu dulu yang memang ditumbuh kembangkan sebagai guru terkait dengan pertanyaan pembudian tadi. Itu terkait dengan psikologi itu ya, peserta didik, karakteristik peserta didik. Nah, itu dia ya. So, 
build. Never ever give up. Be patient. Itulah memang kata kunci salah satu kata kunci uh, menjadi guru. When I ask students, even the primary school students, permintaan mereka, Bapak Ibu Guru harus sabar. Saya cek yang internasional dari beberapa dunia, salah satunya juga be patient. Selalunya mintanya sabar satu, walaupun nanti ada humor ya, ada banyak karakter itu untuk sebagai guru. Nah itu tadi, kalau kita sudah building chemistry dengan anak-anak, misalnya dia agak usil-usil sedikit, jangan langsung dimarahi, misalnya gitu. I do believe ya, yeah. I do believe that your, our effort will actually give the fruit later. Do I answer your question, Dian? Oke, okay, ya. Yeah. Silahkan Bapak Ibu lain. Excuse me, Pak Moderator. Oke. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to add just a right. little bit about uh, sharing my experience. Uh, about motivating student. Uh, I don't know whether it's working for high school or primary school, but usually uh, in the university, we use like breakout room in the Zoom. So it's basically small, small group. So we need to formulate the question that the answer can only be, uh, the, the question can only be answered by the student itself. So cannot be by someone. So that's kind of like at least motivate student to answer, especially if we relate with the marking. Say like, if you participate, you get more marks, something like that. So maybe they just kind of like uh, sharing experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Yeah, that is additional yeah, experience from our very experienced Uh, lecturer in Australia. Australia is very wow ya yeah, for me also because I got also experience there with kids ya yeah, primary school students not only in the big cities but also in the very remote areas ya yeah. maybe Pak Prop maybe you still know oh Bapak in Sydney ya yeah. Sydney yeah. oh di Sydney ya yeah, different uh, uh, ya yeah, different area That, that one very long time ago I will I visited Trafalgar in Melbourne Pak very remote area but facilities yeah are actually the same as in the city so nothing compared to our Indonesian I think that time yeah okay yeah anybody Bapak Ibu it is also in the university level why not although I give the model Yeah, in the senior and junior high school because at the first time I got the information uh, may, could be many of the participants will be teachers of senior man uh, MTS junior high school and the students yeah uh, that is why I am uh, much focusing on to the uh, junior or senior high school related it to the topic in The basic competences or KD. Um, any more questions, dear participants? All right. If uh, there is more questions, um, yeah, I think uh, that's all for our international seminars today. Thank you for the speakers, Dr. Uh, Salahuddin Muhyiddin and, and Dr. Rahmat Hussein for the insightful uh, presentation and ideas who shared to us about the perspective in between actually uh, the two countries, Indonesian and Australian context. And we hopefully um, expect that um, this, international, this international seminar will give, us the, will give us insights and a new knowledge in adapting to the current situation and adopting a uh, new st robust strategy and methods in our um, classroom uh, teaching context. Thank you very much uh, for the two speakers. Um, 
I think that's all for the international seminars. Uh, I need to close this one because we have done uh, completely um, our today activity. Uh, thank you very much as well. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something related to our agenda uh, today. Actually, we are going to have lunch together. Uh, and also, uh, tomorrow we still have one session. So please come on time tomorrow based on the time schedules of hours that I have served to you through WA, maybe by contacting uh, someone. And as I told you before, actually the seminars are conducted in two days, yeah, today and tomorrow. Yeah, even actually uh, we have two speakers uh, in one day, yeah, but tomorrow we still have uh, time, okay, to have discussion, okay, relating to the topics of ours uh, that had been presented by Pak Rahmat and uh, Professor Salahuddin. And okay, ladies and gentlemen, as I told before, we'll have lunch together, but okay, it will start getting lunch at twelve thirty and still have time to. Uh, have uh, rest in this room and okay the uh, the committee will remind you when the land is available in the rest in the restaurant okay thank you and see you tomorrow okay at the last day of this seminars assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh waalaikumsalam baik bapak ibu untuk sementara kenal lunchnya itu ready pada 12.30 ya kita bisa break sebentar di sini nanti akan diingatkan oleh uh, penitia dan hmm. untuk hari kedua oke okay, besok kita akan ada uh, presentasi uh, sebagai presentasi yang terakhir terima kasih terima kasih pada menteri <tuh> pamit dulu Oke, okay, uh, sebelum apa sesi foto bersama, tolong di setting Pak Panitia uh, sebelum kita having lunch. Uh, saya kira di depan Pak Pak Rahmat ya. Uh, sesi foto, uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian.
Aku ke rumah di 